Hi, um, I just wanted to make another video uh, before I turn in for the night um, because I'm up early for work in the morning. just wanted to make a video regarding incels and my view on this present topic of conversation. Whether are they good or bad? Are these people who call themselves incels or are incels, are they, are they good? Are they bad? Um, what is my view on them? As far as I'm aware, incel means involuntary celibate. They are people who want to have a relationship and sex and cannot, even though they want to. I would start by saying that this is something that a person is. It's not a label that they choose to wear. In other words, a person can't necessarily, in the first instance, help being involuntarily celibate. They are in that position. They can't, you can't force yourself on people, that's called rape. You can't force yourself into a relationship with somebody. You are in the position where you want a relationship. Arguably, you may not be doing enough about it to get yourself into a relationship. But the fact of the matter is, that's an incel is not something a person chooses, it's something a person is because of the situation they're in. They are involuntary celibate. So I think it's a bit unfair for some people on the internet to bash these people and talk badly about them and just... I do understand that there have been some people that have murdered people who have also... These people have called themselves incels, Elliot Roger and um, Alex Manassian, the uh, Toronto van driver. And, but just because these people were incels doesn't mean that all the incel, people who call themselves incels are going to kill people or it's going to lead them to killing people. I think we need to be very careful that we don't virtue signal and just have an opinion based on what other people's opinions are and that we are matter of factly come to our own opinions about these people and not just tarnish them with the same brush. Growing up as a teenager, I understood what it was like to be passed over. I can probably say that in my parents' day, I probably wouldn't have been as passed over as I was in my day. I think that's because women's liberation, which I think to some extent is a good thing, I think it's good that women don't feel that they have to now date below them or date a man that they don't feel is, is socially astute or, you know, apt enough for them with enough savoir faire or whatever you call it. It's good in a way. But the thing is, before in my parents' day, dating was even the socially awkward people would get dates and they would get uh, marriage partners. They may not be the marriage partners they wanted and their marriage partners may, may not have wanted necessarily them, but they got somebody. They, they got to be in a relationship, to be in a marriage. Now, in my day, growing up to now, because of, because of women's liberation, because of feminism, women now have all the choices they want. They, there's no societal pressure saying you have to go with somebody, you know, that you don't perhaps like, which I think is a good thing. I don't think that women should go with men that they, they are not interested in or or they don't feel cut the muscle. Unfortunately, a fallout from that is there's a lot of men that then don't get to have a relationship. I think hypergamy comes into the fray as well, and we need to discuss that here. Because hypergamy is when a woman who's very average, perhaps, perhaps she sits at home eating chocolate and not doing anything with her life, then expects a man who perhaps earns a six-figure salary, wears an Armani suit, is super good looking. She expects that kind of man, even though she's not she's not in his level. And very often society tells those women, yes, you can have that kind of man, even though you're an average woman. And I think that's very wrong. I think we need to have very realistic expectations of the kind of partners we can have. I, I don't think it's always good that this hypergamous nature of thinking, oh, well, I, even though I'm very average and basic woman, I can have a super fantastic guy who, you know, is is is, is fantastic in every sort of way. It's this 80-20 rule of 80% of the women wanting 20, the top 20% of the men. 
you know, it sometimes happens that way, particularly in the world, perhaps not so much in the church where I grew up in, you know, in the Christian family, I don't necessarily expect that as much. But in the world where a lot of these incels are, it's the 80-20 rule all over again, and they are they are the bottom of, of the pile. I don't mean that in a nasty way. If you're an incel watching this, I don't I don't mean you actually are the bottom of the pile, but that's how, how perhaps society sees you. But I do think that as, 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 as men, we should try to do our best with our lives, not to get the woman, not to get the woman. Really, it doesn't really matter if you're an incel or not. It doesn't matter if you are involuntary celibate. Put that aside for a minute, get on with your own life, get some passions under your belt, get into a nice job, earn some money. I don't, I'm not saying you have to earn six figures or anything, but, but make a life for yourself and don't worry about the fact that you're still a virgin or you're not married or whatever else. I wouldn't worry about these things. These things are not important. I know that as a young man, if you're watching this, they feel important and a lot of other young men are saying, when did, when did you lose your virginity? When did you, you know, where's your girlfriend? You know, and everybody else around you has got a girlfriend and you think, well, why haven't I got a girlfriend? I've been there. Uh, it's not a nice place to be. I understand. But if you can have the strength of character to say, well, actually, I'm going to get on with my life. I'm going to uh, get on with, with what I'm doing. Get so passionate about something like learning a guitar or something else um, or getting to a job that you're really passionate about. I don't do it for women. I'm not saying that you. That I'm one of these PUAs who says, well, you've got to do this, make something in your life so a woman likes you. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying doing it, do it for you. Become better for you. Not for anybody else. Do it for you. And then in doing it for you, if you then, in that position of power, want to be with a woman, that's your choice. You then have that as a choice. Whereas if you're like many incels are, not, not working on yourself. Not, if you want to, you can't have that choice because women don't like you anyway. So in order to be in a position where women might like you, work on yourself for your own benefit, for your own choice, and, and then you can you can decide to accept or reject a woman in that position, in, in that, that sort of sphere where you are now. I think this is, this is really, really important. I also think a lot of incels, and I've touched on this in, a, in another video about self-fulfilling prophecies, a lot of these incels are the way they are because they, they believe things about themselves that simply are not true. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with you. Society, there might, you might have a condition like autism or, or, or um, borderline personality disorder. I'm not disputing that. But beyond, those are conditions. Underneath your condition, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with you. People say there are, but people can say a lot of things. And you shouldn't just believe the first thing a person says about you or what certain people says about, say about you. If a group of women are laughing at you, that's their problem. You walk on by, you do your thing. Soon, when you're the man you want to be, they will not be laughing at you. right? So this is, this is a really important fact. So don't hate women. Don't get angry with women. Work on yourself. Get yourself together. Realise there's nothing fundamentally wrong with you, right? Get yourself together. Realise that you're not a loser, right? That's an opinion that other people have of you. And get on with your life. And then, you know, that's that. But I don't think a person who's an incel is a bad person, necessarily. Some incels can be bad people. Some, a lot of people who are not incels can be bad people. You can be in a relationship and be an awful person. You can be a single person for a long time, be a great person. That is not the deal. Society makes it the deal. Society says, well, if you're not in a relationship, you're a loser, you're awkward, you're socially awkward. It's not good. So anyway, that's my two pennies worth on the subject of incels. Are they good or bad? Thank you for watching.